Ben. Yeah. Singing and hearing words of wisdom, let it be in the wisdom factory. She sings, yeah. Hello and welcome to the Wisdom Factory, a forum for open-minded people like you and us uh, who have knowledge and experience and wisdom to share with the world. Uh, I'm uh, Mark Davenport and I'm Heidi Hörnlein. All right. And our topics in this series have covered many areas of human experience. We like to invite people who not only have interesting things to say about their own topics in their lives, but who also have an evolved perspective on themselves and what they're doing. So these are people who feel inspired to contribute to the creation of a, a better world by helping people gain a, a better understanding and perspective on what is happening, both in the world and in their own lives, and what they can contribute to the resolution of the many problems we are facing at this moment in our history. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And you are watching today the 16th episode of our Wisdom Factory show, and which is called Art and Music a la Integral. And our guests are Scott Marshall and David Long. Mm -hmm. But before uh, we talk a little bit more yeah. about that, we can introduce ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have created this series because we want to bring out into the world our knowledge and our experience, which we have learned in quite a bit of a oh, long many, many decades, yes. And many things who have opened our vision of the world and what it is all about. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly because we were attracted by integral theory, and this is very several years ago. Mm -hmm. For me, about 20 years ago, for you a little mm -hmm. bit shorter. Yes. But yeah. it was a moment when understanding came. And we want to give you the opportunity to have a little bit of a glimpse of that. Professionally, we are counselors and coaches. Mm -hmm. especially for creating thriving relationships mm -hmm. <laughs> like we yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And we run a cultural association, um, a retreat and a guest house. This is called Paradiso Integrale, which you find here when you look on the event page. And this place is in Umbria in Italy. And you are very welcome to stop by and come and see us. And that is where we're broadcasting from today. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And before we go to the music part, I want to say today is a special day because we are ending the first series mm -hmm. of our Wisdom Factory and the second series will begin in 6th of March. So today is Celebration Day and what is better for that than art and music? And with that I give over to the music. Oh, Scott, Scott. give us a little bit. Okay, let me, just, let me just make a, an adjustment. Yes. Right. And we mute. Okay. Get the guitar here. Okay. So this is a, this is a song called Moses Coffee. Cup of coffee Moses made Was the same that Abraham drank Gave to me upon bended knee Was the same when he fell asleep Well the sun refused to shine and those daughters of the divine They drank from the vine From the vine Cup of coffee Moses made his beard was long and gray and stuff Long hours of talking over stuff 
cup of coffee Moses made. Well, the sun refused to shine, and those daughters were drunk on wine. They straightened out and they flew right. They flew right. They flew right. And now I know. And now, and now I know. And now, and now I know. Thank you. Oh, thank you very oh, much, yes. Scott. Yeah, that was, was nice. very nice. Oh. And I want to thank you. ask our watchers if they have noticed that the lower third with the name of Scott has some similarity with ours. Mm -hmm. And this is not by chance. And maybe because what's behind us here. What's behind us, yeah, yeah sure, oh. too. Because we want oh. to say that Scott has created our colors for the Wisdom Factory. And we are very, very grateful. When he heard about this uh, project we were having, he said, oh, how can I collaborate? And I loved his colors. And so we are so fortunate to mm -hmm. have it. Yep, we mm -hmm. are indeed. <laughs> so first question. Well, that was really nice, Scott. And, Thank and you. I could see, you know, there was there was more than a, a literal line in there. There was something uh, behind what you were saying. And yeah. we're <clears throat> talking about interval. Let us first ask him how come that he is a musician and he is an artist. Yeah. Maybe we start yeah. here. Okay. Well, uh, I kind of, I kind of um, was born that way. I'd say, but as an artist, somebody that it just kind of runs in the blood. You could say too. My great, my grandfather is an artist, and um, so I'm an artist. And sometimes, you know, think it's amazing how things happen like that. But for me, um, it it really started to shine when I was uh, about eight years old, and then. I had an art teacher that kind of saw that in me, and then um, because of that, then I decided that that was really kind of my identity for a long time, and uh, still is. So I haven't really given up on it. I've always, I've always been making art, and there was a time, you know, where you get wounded as an artist, but you you, st you start to kind of heal and move through that stuff, and and. Um, so, uh, in terms of music, I, I started out as a drummer. So, um, well, even before then, it was piano back when I was little. But drummer, drummer in high school, and played a lot of rock and roll bands, ska, punk bands, playing a lot of drums. So I, I just taken up the guitar not that long ago, and I enjoy uh, belting out some songs on that. <laughs> yeah. And the, and the visual uh, art that you got into, you have a history with that too. That's right. So I I feel that I'm more I'm a stronger visual artist, and uh, the you know I went to school I went to college for art, and I you know got a degree in art studio with a painting kind of focus, and you know was certified to teach art. I, I work in special education, so I get a I get a whole creative aspect of my being that I use there. But um, visual art all throughout, love to paint, love to draw. I see things compositionally. I see the world that way. And um, and it all started to come together that um, there's a certain style that's forming. And, and since I've learned... Uh, studied more philosophy and done a lot of meditation, gotten into integral theory, I feel like I'm a more cohesive representation of myself and therefore that that particular aspect of me comes out more in the art and even more so these days. So, um, so yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Well, great. And what I, I, I'm noticing as you're speaking here is that you have a very uh, kind of grounded uh, way of uh, presenting yourself that is very uh, calming, reassuring, and authentic. 
Like well, that. thank you, thank you, Mark. That's very. Yeah. You're a sweet guy. Fishing <laughs> <laughs> for compliments. <laughs> Let's go to, to David. He is sitting down here so alone. So patiently. <laughs> what kind of nice things you got to say about me? I'm pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, tell oh, us well, about you and your art too. Then we can say some nice things then. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, um, I liked his uh, answer about being born an artist. I think that everybody is born an artist. And society kind of pounds it out of us, or um, it's it's also something that is is nurtured, you know. I um, so I think it's it's something that's developed. I started when I was really young. I think it starts when you you know are drawing or coloring or something, and you go and you show your mommy or your daddy, and they're like, "That's good. Keep doing that," you know. And and you do. And I never stopped. Um, I know that society has this way of telling people things like, "Oh, that's not realistic," or "That's not a good way to make money," and and that and that bit may be true, you know. But um, money is is a, a means in itself, not not an end. And I would like to think that art and self-expression is is really a, an important part of of being human, and. Um, understanding theory, you know, the more understanding you have, the more that affects your your control. And so, you know, your art changes over time as you as you grow and evolve. What was the question? <laughs> Do you say some nice things to him? Do I say some nice things about you first? <laughs> you know what what I really enjoy about about you, David, is that. You go right for the hard stuff, the deep stuff, you know, that uh, you are ready to dive in and, and parse this, this whole business out, you know, and, and turn it into words. You know, you may be talking about visual art, you may be talking about your music, but when you talk about it, you have a vocabulary and a determination to take it apart and analyze it and see what you're doing. And to be able to tell what other people are doing, also, and it's a it's a priceless gift. I do appreciate that. Man, you are a, a very sweet guy. You do have. <laughs> <laughs> but the the audience can see that we know you already. We have done already shows together and yeah. collaborated. There is a comment from Nasim, and he asks you, where are Scott and David located? Would oh. you like to ask uh, to answer to that? Mm -hmm. Sure, I'll go first. Um, I'm in a, a town called Rumney, New Hampshire, which is here in the Northeast. And you go, you, but you USA. go back and forth. USA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I'm located in an undisclosed, in undisclosed location, coming to you as a digital hologram in the interwebs. <laughs> no, I, I live in uh, I live in Fayetteville, Arkansas, right now. Okay. Okay, so um, I know you have prepared, David, something, but you don't sing, you said, because for various reasons, And but you have the text of a song and you want to present it to us. Would you like to do that in this moment? Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah, it's, um, I'm just going to do a spoken word version of, of one of my songs. This song is called With Your Time. It's off of my album, The Outer Regions of Inner Space, and it goes like this. Behold the moon. It reflects the sun. It's always shifting in its phases. In the darkest night, illuminating paths, reflecting on the water as it blazes. Shed your shadow and be born again like the self-eating serpent that sheds its skin. Learn lessons from the moon. Embrace the feminine. You should understand why we feel this connection. We rise each day because the sun's resurrection. It's just too bright to see. So we worship its reflection naturally. Realizing our vision actually, from fantasy to factually, we simply use causality to create a new reality. It's all about your mentality, morality from a perspective beyond mortality. Stop worshiping that fallacy, universal commonality. Dispensed with the formalities, you could never have neutrality or forget about practicality. It's all about what you do. 
And what do you do with your time? I'm moving people up the spiral dynamically, applying this integral philosophy, logic and theosophy, cartography of human possibility, flexibility of the body and mind as a useful tool for I am this in time. Yeah, I'm the divine. If you seek, then you'll find. I am the living truth behind your symbols and signs. I am every light in every lifetime. I am infinite, eternal. Go ahead and rewind. This is my message in a bottle. Send it out to the planet. The future's in our making, so let's sit down and plan it. I am it. Create a better future so that we can all stand it. Balance out the bullshit and together, goddammit. We can do it. Has to do with understanding how to prove it. Take it to the people and create a revolutionary movement. To the middle, if life's a riddle, tiny dancer, this is the answer to our cancer. We can escape the us and them of nationalism by establishing unity, compassion, and rationalism. What do you do with your time? Well, I'm giving you a method. You should listen, go apply it, research it for yourself, the peer review process. Try it. You might just find it works for you. Move from the middle. That's what you do. First, we find the opposites. The opposites attract, define themselves in opposition. We need to step back. Divisions of four may help with that. And now we see a cycle. Let's look at some facts. Pros and cons on all sides is what we find. We weigh the short-term and long-term possibilities in our mind. From this point of understanding, we can take control, do what we must do to accomplish our goals, not just for me, but for the whole. Balance the universal mind, body, and soul by taking control of the part that you play. Wake up and do that shit every day. This is the new Tao. Yo, this is the new way. You are what you do and you are what you say, so please be responsible for the part that you play. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow, that was great. Wagnerian in the stoke. <laughs> Wonderful. I, I, I had a little bit of a problem to really understand. It was very quick. And I would really appreciate if after the show you would um, copy and paste this in the in the comment stream. Yeah. Oh, the lyric? Nice. Yeah, yeah. The lyrics. also yours, uh, Scott, would be nice so that we can hear the yes. text. Because this leads us a little bit into integral. Yeah, Why it does. Why is your music integral or your art integral? What is the difference? What is that? What does it mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I want to play the person who asks the dumb questions here, you know? Because I have... Uh, I have you know, a background in art history, you know, I can go back and I can tell you what century things were printed, or painted in, etc. Uh, and, and I really enjoy that. I, mean, I see it in buildings, I see it in statues and painting and so on, and I can do it with music too, you know. And then I get to a point about 10 years ago and I started seeing integral stuff and I said, I don't understand that. What's this, you know? What's going on here that, boom, that I don't quite get, you know? What is it that I didn't quite get, you know, even though I could go through all this history of art, you know, and appreciate the art? Who would like to, who would like to um, enlighten me? Hmm? Yeah. Don't all talk at once. Oh, I'll, I'll go first. I'll go first. Go first Scott. I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll go first. You know, I'm ready to jump right in the deep end, but... <laughs> all right. uh, how about this, man? I'll carve it out, and then you do the details, all right? All right, all right. Yes. How's that sound? <laughs> Start the carving, man. Yeah, I'll carve it. I, I think that, well, fundamentally, the, the whole... The whole thing of, of integral or the aqual theory is development. So everybody develops through stages, everybody develops, everybody starts out at square one. Uh, so if you apply development to art, that's what you'll see. So you'll or here. So you'll you'll see in art people who um, have gone through different levels. So for example, art can be um, there's different modes of art. You can have tribal art. You can have mythic art. You can have um, modern art or rational art. And you can have postmodern art. And that's really what you'll see is those four. So you got uh, you you got you got early art. You got you know the mythic art that you might see at church. You've got art that you that you'll see um, that really kind of swept the world. 
the first kind of art that really transformed the world, rational art from the modern world, and then you have postmodern art. Excuse me, can you give an yeah. example here too? Yeah. What would be tribal art? What would be something we know? Oh, from tribal art? Um, <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe some aspects of that you might see nowadays. You might you you might see. I, I'm just thinking cave art comes to mind for me. Cave art sure. that you might see in uh, you know a ancient painting, things like that. Um, in 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 today's world, maybe you'd see it a little bit as graffiti, but there's some. There's some artists that don't I don't think apply as as tribal artists that are graffiti artists, but um, so you well, know uh, that is it yeah. seems if you don't mind me interrupting is no is go ahead it, is it seems like there might be like a cultural style yeah. that can happen at a certain general altitude, but then like a person might take on that style from their perspective. And it's not necessarily that they're at the altitude of the style, that's but right. there's something that speaks about that style to them from wherever, whatever perspective they're coming at it. You know, like um, Picasso might be doing some like cultural deconstructive, destructive kind of stuff with cubism and like taking these different perspectives, and um, someone like Pollock might be in that same kind of. Um, Postmodernist art, but he might not be a postmodernist himself. He might be doing it for other reasons. Yeah, I like the way you put it, David. That's uh, that's very good. So um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll see if I can footnote it, and then you can go ahead more, David, if you'd like. I I think I think that when you get all of a sudden after postmodern art, there's there's been a lot of of confusion as to maybe what art is these days or what makes something integral art and in terms of development um, an integral artist is someone who essentially understands the value of all of the other levels of development that had come before so that's fundamentally speaking what a integral person or an integral artist would see is the truth and partiality of every particular artistic mode there is. It doesn't mean that he or she is throwing all kinds of stuff on a canvas and saying that that's, that's interval art because that, it includes all the, the former aspects. It might, which would be very pain, painstaking. But it, it, would, it would have the art object made by that person would have that person's particular uh, understanding in somehow as imbued in the art objects. It sounds kind of magical. Can I ask uh, something? Would it be when you are an integral artist, you would appreciate the artists of the other levels, the modern art you would appreciate? You might not like it, but appreciate it for what it is. And the tribal art, or also the mythic art, the church art, I mean, here in Italy, it's all full of this uh, art form. You would appreciate it as as that what it is, and not say, oh, this one, this person is painting horribly, and this is, wah, this is nothing. An integralist would recognize the value of what he or she sees. Is it, the, is it so? I think absolutely. Um, and I would say that they would play with those themes to some, to some extent, too. Like, I know um, that... I've kind of, you know, I think a lot of what my what my style is is somewhat abstract, and um, yet, you know, I also have this one portrait painting I have where I'm kind of using some of the the color schemes of traditional art, like the golds and the blues that you, that you would see to kind of to kind of um, imbue some of the meaning that those religious pieces would have had into this into this other piece. So I, I definitely think that they um, that they resonate. Um, for for me, uh, I think what integral art is about is a lot about um, is is a lot expressing a transpersonal kind of perspective. If you if you are like if you're listening to the lyrics, you almost want to wonder, like, where is this coming from? Like, wh what are the values behind this? And, you know, also I've noticed that in my art, 
um, th my uh, my hip hop persona or whatever, and my idea going into it was um, to speak from the perspective of I amness. So to 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 make music from this ultimate perspective, you know, through my eyes, to let that you know that God voice within me speak, and to create these kind of um, anthems, or and and even like sort of repurposing old school mantras and things like that, um, you know, like this little light of mine and and um, all is impermanent and, and things like that and, and try to repurpose them in, in kind of a, a, a cool con contemporary way. I always, I'm always tempted to say the word modern, you know, because I mean like like it's like up to date, but I guess con contemporary is the word I'm going to... I'm going to use to describe that because we don't want to confuse it with the the modern stage of development. But the other thing I think is like what Scott is saying about um, in the same way that as we grow and as we learn, we take on the lessons of the previous stages. We transcend and include. Um, I would say that when when an integralist makes art, he makes it with his whole self. With you know, like all the way up the Maslow's spiral, spiral of of um, of uh, a needs or whatever, from all of those drives, he makes it from his his um, in, his instinctive drive. He uses he uses his heart. He he um, engages with his rationality, and you know he he brings all of these things to the table. And the other thing is like with. Um, like in terms of big mind or something like that, the ability to bring all of these voices online and to start to have a conversation with them. Like I notice that when I make a song sometimes, I'll start from like some lower chakras and bring in like the heart space and, and talk about, you know, my pain and my worry and these things. And then I'll bring in some, the, some higher perspectives and I'll put those perspectives in perspective. So I'm really creating a space for the listener to be able to step in and bring their own things that would resonate with what I'm bringing. So I'm, in a sense, like not just talking about David and what I like, but I'm creating this conversation about what's happening from this particular view. What do you, what do you think, Scott? Yeah, I like that, David. Very well said. I, I wanted to, to like um, also comment to how important states of consciousness are. So you have, you know, in integral theory, there's roughly three or four states of consciousness: waking, dreaming, uh, dreamless, deep dreamless sleep, and some kind of witnessing, and then maybe even a non-dual stage after that. So when an artist is making their art especially someone who's integrally informed, also understands how important the state's consciousness are in informing the art. For example, subtle realms, or the subtle body, or the dream state, very important for artists, you know, all throughout history, as a way to envision, or vision, or project, or show imagery that come from a vast realm of imaginative whatever it could be. People that could be part animal, people that could be, that you know, um, different. What your your power animal might be, <laughs> but like, but um, different different aspects of energy, different aspects uh, of how things feel, and especially with an altered state. So if an ar an artist is familiar with navigating different states of consciousness, so usually um, they are and they want to put that in their art, then an integral art would have all of that. You know, would have uh, somebody who, what, what they're doing when you look at their creation, that you will get a hit from. You will get a, you will get a download, so to speak, from that artist where their mind, their consciousness was at when they created that piece, you know. So not only their development, but their state comes through, you know. Wonderful. Yeah. So Thank like you. Alex Gray or something like that, where you look at yeah. his work and you don't just see like the a, a simple kind of objective reality, but you see um, a heightened, more complete um, per perspective of reality. And we 
add in the things or the elements that we see that maybe the average person doesn't see in hopes to expand their sight. I, I think that's where you're going with that. And also using some of this imagery and stuff that is not just purely literal, like real world imagery, it could be surreal or whatever. I, I like this kind of idea and I was thinking about your fractal art and I was thinking about my art too and I was trying to think about these common these commonalities and one of the things I was thinking about was is there's this kind of uh, a combination or a hybrid hybridization of like organic forms and theoretical forms and sacred imagery and when you can when you and I think like a fractal does that because it's fractals are, are organic but it's also a theoretical way of of talking about you know the, the, the whole ons and the different levels of reality which which helps us to gain some kind of perspective and and um, that's you know usually being able to, to have some kind of image that, that represents reality and gives you some kind of bigger perspective is use, is usually seen in, as some kind of a sacred symbol. So I think um, there's a lot of common ground there. I want yes. to to tell the listeners that you are both also philosophers. So you have a sort of language that maybe not everybody gets at the first moment. and. Well, you want to say something? Yes, as I was listening to this, I was starting to think, my goodness, you know, throwing all this stuff onto a canvas, for example, that would be a Wagnerian nightmare <laughs> without some kind of discipline, you know, uh, to to choose and pick and, and sort and, and use very consciously these different elements. And, of course, you can't use all the elements at once. But... Uh, uh, it, it does sound, you know, I'm putting myself in the, in the position of someone who's hearing about integral art at, for the first moment. So, you know, how does this get uh, displayed, for example, on a canvas? Let us mm -hmm. uh, ask uh, David, before you showed us the, the, the window, could you show us to the, to the yeah. listeners, watchers? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, we already see your art behind you. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got some back here. Mm -hmm. um, this is a uh, a window that I found. I like I'm I'm a poor artist because <laughs> so I like to find things like windows and things that I can paint on. I'm trying to see if I can find a position that doesn't have yeah, too much good. glare. Mm -hmm. um, but this is a this is a window that I painted on, and I painted on the back of it the background and then some foreground elements as well. And kind of what I'm what I'm trying to do with a lot of my art is to kind of give a new way of conceptualizing individuals and and their environment and how they how they relate to each other. So kind of I'm sort of doing a fractal kind of thing too, where I'm zooming down a layer, you know, like looking at uh, thinking, trying to think about cells. And you know, ha and um, biological environments and, and things like that, and and maybe t and to think about humans in a more um, you know big picture kind of scope. So each one of these cells uh, uh, represents um, a sort of a flux of a being at, at a particular point in time. Uh, if you notice, these cells are slightly more evolved than uh, these than, than these cells. Um, they uh, well, they're, they're, they might be somewhat comparable, but some of my some of my cells are more green, and these ones are more um, yellow and turquoise, and a lot of these colors correlate to um, the, the theoretical aspects of like spiral dynamics, which has to do with human development and and whatnot. So, you know, in, in the same in this same kind of way, I guess I'm trying to to get you to to rethink about how you see people and the world around you. Mm, yeah. And that's going to be a common theme, I think, in, in integral art. Yeah. There's some purpose to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just trying to get you to take a, a bigger picture perspective and to, and, to, and to see yourself and your environment, you know, in that kind of a way, I think is, is one of the main 
um, motivations behind it. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I would like, Scott, if you would prepare your uh, sure. screen share for your pictures. And I know you have uh, prepared a, a document with several pictures which are sort of documenting the last four years of your visual artist life. <laughs> yes, yes. Here we go. And I hit the button. Is that coming up? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. okay. okay. So, so um, I, I like what David's been saying. And also, if people that are watching want to ask questions, by typing in, right, Heidi? They can just type in questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. There is something I would uh, just bring up from Rain. Yeah. She says, uh, just a minute, I bring it up. I love the colors and shapes in this piece of art. It is still for David, but I think she will have to say something for you too in a little while. So go uh, ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> fantastic. This is a this is a picture of a actual analog canvas. So I've, I've been kind of doing actual, real, in, in the three-dimensional world, art for a while. And you can see I'm, I'm kind of transitioning to digital art, but I haven't quite got there yet. This piece is, is called a breakthrough, and I've had several breakthrough pieces. Um, and you can see kind of elements from postmodernism. I'm really trying to figure out the line. I'm really trying to figure out how color should go. And I've, I've come into integral theory, and I'm seeing how things fit together, but it's not quite there yet. It, it wants to be a fractal, but it's not a fractal. <laughs> <laughs> and so here it is, a, a bigger version of it. And this is sort of like different opposing forces, good and evil versus some kind of non, not to approach where it holds both. And they're drippy, melty. I like psychedelic art. I'm interested in how things can kind of merge into something else while remain uh, their own specific thing. Here's one. It's supposed to be a still life, and it's turned into more of a study of line and how that feels. And here we are, and I'm starting to get that fractal feel where things have smaller parts and they have more of a uh, direct relationship with everything else on the actual piece rather than just being put on there. So this is, this is probably just two years ago, this piece. So then I go into using the iPad for some digital art. And uh, here is, this piece is called You Are Here. And there's a obvious arrow, but, but the whole movement of energy is something that I'm starting to get really interested in, in how energy can be shown visually almost like a pebble in a pond, or in this case a small little frog face in a pond, or just, you know, just these, this, these elements that I want people to begin to resonate on the inside, a state that I'm feeling at the time of stillness or separateness, and also, you know, how things are, are kind of flowing together, integrating. You know, I'm not quite there yet. And then I had a major shift. This is, of course, Leonard Nimoy. I had a major shift last spring where all of a sudden it was like a lightning bolt hit me. And I felt, gosh, I can be like the Andy War integral Andy Warhol and make all these portraits of people. And so this is one of them, and, and uh, some people call this the neon style. I like the neon, neon portrait, neon fractal portrait style. And of course there's no fractals in this yet. This is just line and the boundary of the person with um, splotching, and I get that postmodern Jackson Pollock feel even though it's digital. So that that's, marks a change. And then come the fractals. So here's a fractal uh, piece that's created three-dimensionally in the computer. Um, and I began to fall in love and nerd out over 3D fractals, backflipping over fractals. This is, I just keep making these every day. I make usually five or six of these kinds of things every day. 
And these, these are about composition and finding texture and finding depth because they can really give a feel to a piece that's like, say, a portrait, you know, of somebody. They could get a back, backdrop of them. Here's, here's a better, this is a, this is a piece called Spiral Dynamics. So this is kind of like that idea of evolution in a whirlwind, tour de force, uh, acid paper. Let's let's go on this free ride, man, and see what this looks like. So that's that's that. And this is a piece I did for the school I work at. This is um, printed very large for them for them to hang. And this is the playground. And over overlaid is a fractal. And I caught. I actually photographed a, a rainbow. It's not a double rainbow. It's just a regular rainbow. And it's it's about line also. It's about how the, the sky and the trees meet within this kind of complex holographic network, the energy related to how the fractal can show that or give that, give that feel of that, that holographic feel. And uh, then uh, Mr. Corey DeVos, uh, asked me to do a portrait of his daughter and uh, for Mother's Day and there it is that's Evelyn and um, she's a she's a liver transplant survivor so I just got this big warm gushy love vibe so I decided to make this this particular version of that and um, I like it I like the I think that this is successful in color one of the more successful. I make a lot of these, you know. This is Mr. Mark Davenport, and uh, there he is, post European conference, Mark. So he's been, he's got the download there, up on the chin, right up on that nose, all the way in the back in the brain case. Look at the download Mark got, and of course this is including the fractal, um, subtle energy feel. So. This is uh, one of my more successful photo. So I take the photograph and I I almost do I, I do kind of like a tracing part and then it's like my style of my pen work and you get really good. It's like he's he's the uh, the the good profile shot here side view. Here we have Heidi and this is I'm starting to develop newer techniques with the fractals and finding different programs that give different effects. And or iterations, as I call them, iterations. And so here is, of course, the laser line style, but with the added depth or the subtle energy feel of a person. So you get this essence of the person, and you get their overall totality at that moment, in that moment, uh, as best as I can deliver. So there's the there's Heidi. So and this is a, a representation of a universe or the dropless drop or the infinite I amness, uh, suchness, isness of experience done using fractal imagery, three-dimensional. And I, I think it's pretty good um, use of the technology because this is going to inform some good pieces later on. And here, here we have... Um, uh, an integral elite. <laughs> so, so I what I like about what I like about this piece is that um, there's not a lot of line work done. I didn't do a lot of line work, but I really focused a lot on the back on the background here. And there, if you can look closely, there is three dimensional fractal work. It looks like a kind of a building structure because. Uh, you know, whenever I listen to the Daily Evolver, I kind of get this feel like, you know, he's really trying. He's really trying to give us the structure to the to the to the news, and he's doing the best that he that he can. He's a Boulder, Colorado, coming coming at you here. And then here's, of course, uh, my Ken Wilber piece, which I was very happy that reached his computer through uh, some integral connections. There, this wound up on his through into his email and he said that he liked it and that made that kind of like me I, if I died tomorrow that would make me feel the the best cuz I'm such a fanboy of Ken Wilber and here you have of course the three-dimensional fractal 
combined with some of the more ethereal fractal imagery that I've been able to, and some minimal line work because Ken's kind of at this suchness level and he's got he's he's a uh, his state of consciousness is is really tr imposing as it's coming through and yet soft, you know. And it's finding the right colors that work that show him as he is when he when that photograph is taken and and give that 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 uh, perfect perfect feel. I feel when I look at this one, this is one of my most successful ones. And here is Corey himself, and uh, this is Corey Devos. And uh, moving along, this is Jeremy Johnson, and yeah, this, is, mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is the last one, and this is a piece that I did called Layers of Consciousness. So this is kind of like a, a combination of all the things I've done up to this point, including using some, some different layer, layering effects. So there you go. Thank you. Oh. Thank you very much. There is Rain, <laughs> and she was commenting on something you did before. A fascinating journey, and the energy in your pieces is amazing. I mean, this is all the time. Then the holographic effect in the piece you did for the school really exposes the unseen within the scene. Yes, a motif that you should see in integral art. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Wonderful. We are we very near our time, but I want to give David uh, the possibility to show his uh, screen share and talk a little bit about this. And then comes the celebration part and the last music part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. okay. Let's see. So are we seeing that? Let's see. Let's go to the top. So this first piece that you see here is um, you can see that it's on kind of a, a red background. I painted this for a friend of mine um, knowing that he was going to put it on his red wall. And for me, this was like the beginning of my Cells in Flux series, which is the name of, of this series that I'm doing, um, because I was really interested in the way that the colors affected each other. Like, so I almost did like these stacking, these piling, this piling kind of thing of these different cells. And like, when I was going through with my brush, I was connecting different colors in different areas. So that way, it was almost like in the, in the way that um, societies or um, in social situations, different people have an effect on each other and I was I was um, really thinking about that and that was what we what really got me started thinking about some of these ideas this is uh, one of my newer pieces and uh, this is exploring some more of the the abstract um, the abstract style my style um, I think it really started a um, started out being about trying to find um, a balance, a balance point between um, sort of chaos but also, but also like hard lines and getting the right color balance so that way um, certain things pop and it gives sort of a 3D kind of effect, kind of an effect to, to get the right kind of um, darkness and light so it's not just like you know, a bunch of colors exploding at you, but it has, like, the depth in it, so that way um, the colors pop. This is uh, another one of my early ones that I like a lot. Um, one of the things I, I like about it is that it's got kind of a, a grid behind it, so I feel like it, it's really starting to do uh, a good combination of this... Um, theoretical, sacred, and organic kind of combination. Somebody was telling me that they thought that um, the, the lines and stuff that you see on the side, on the right over here, kind of look like a, a rib cage or something, and I, I, like, I like that idea. Um, so this is, a, this is a, a theme that I've been exploring a lot lately, and I'm trying to get a bunch of work done in the area, get a bunch of variations on the theme, and then I'm going to have a giant show. 
I'm selling um, prints and scans, and you can get a lot of this stuff on on Society Six. Like you can get this as your um, you can get this as your shower curtain, or like as a rug, or as your phone case, or something like that. And uh, I have links to all all that stuff on my website. But um, yeah, yeah, this is wonderful. And to have named your website and use um, David um, Scott, you don't have it here on your. Um, on your lower third, would you name it? Would you say what your website is, Scott? Oh yeah, I have a I have a blog that I I don't I don't have a, a big operation where I sell stuff yet, but I have a blog where people can look at my work called scottmarshallart.org. I think it's called. It's uh, blogspot.com. Scottmarshallart at blogspot.com. And you are also both present on Facebook, and I yes. really would appreciate if you would be more present on Google Plus and present yourself with these wonderful things. And yeah. I hope slowly, slowly, I get you there. Oh, yeah. We have already done these shows, and mm -hmm. this now we come to the celebration part. Celebrate? Yes. Wow, that's the best part. Yeah, and we have to announce that this is the last show for a while, mm -hmm. but we won't stop. We will offer a, what, how did we call that? A wisdom chat. A wisdom chat. A wisdom That's chat, right. where we don't invite uh, special people, but where we talk between us or other normal people <laughs> who don't normal, teach something to you, but who try together with us to explore things which they have learned and which they have questions. So you might also, the, the watchers, you might be interested in, in jumping in, connect with us and be part of this mm -hmm. chat. So let us know and we will maybe every week but at least in a certain amount until we restart with a second season in the 6th of May and the second Season probably meant probably meant that this is Italian. <laughs> probably will have the overall title, wisdom technologies. Yeah. So, and now is the time before we hear Scott. You can prepare and okay. Yeah. But before we hear the music, we celebrate the show, the Wisdom Factory. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody for having been our guests and our audience. Will you do that? I certainly will. And then you have to give something to Scott and to David, too. How am I going to do that? And to all our watches. I, I see know. Rain. Rain, did you prepare all your right. glass? There we go. <laughs> all right. Something Pinot all right. Chardonnay. Pinot Chardonnay. Okay. okay. <laughs> this right. is for Yay. you. Yay. Me. And a little for me. Yes. And I'm just split. Cheers. Okay, cheers and cheers. thank you. <laughs> cheers. Thanks. Okay. Thanks so much, you guys, for having this great show. I'm so glad to be a part of it. Oh. And so glad that you came. Yes, really. And yeah, thank you. Thank you, da Scott. thank you, David. Thank yeah. you, Scott. Just I wanted I was wanted to thank David for a nice chat with him and and a nice chat with you guys, Mark and Heidi. We'll play a little song. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell us the name and? Ah, uh, sure. This I'm gonna this uh see I'm gonna do this song is called Ohm. Okay. Did you think about the studio mode? Yes, I did. I let me just check. Let me just check it. I'm getting. I'm not a. There we go. Okay. Okay, Fantastic. and we can see you hopefully while you play. <laughs> yes. Let me. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, we good. That's good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Try to get real close to the guitar. Now, can you put the camera just okay. a little higher? <laughs> there we go. Okay. How's that? Good. Better. Okay. Take all day just to slow me down. 
I have a garden with the roses all around It's a show I want you to know Fantastic ways and the cosmic undertow. What are you clinging on to? Yes, the stars are always shining. It's a love that you love Yeah, and it sings to you Like those burning, burning doves Fantastic way Yes, the Ooh, wonderful oh, and yeah. thank you so much and <laughs> bye, bye bye thank bye 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 everybody let's sit down and plan it i am it create a better future so that we can all stand it balance out the bullshit and together god damn it we could do it has to do with understanding how to prove it take it to the people and create a revolutionary movement to the middle if life's a riddle tiny dancer this is the answer to our cancer we can escape the us and them of nationalism by establishing unity compassion and rationalism what do you do with your time well, I'm giving you a method. You should listen, go apply it, research it for yourself, the peer review process. Try it. You might just find it works for you. Move from the middle. That's what you do. First, we find the opposites. The opposites attract. Define themselves in opposition. We need to step back. Divisions of four may help with that. And now we see a cycle. Let's look at some facts. Pros and cons on all sides is what we find. We weigh the short-term and long-term possibilities in our mind. From this point of understanding, we can take control, do what we must do to accomplish our goals, not just for me, but for the whole. Balance the universal mind, body, and soul by taking control of the part that you play. Wake up and do that shit every day. This is the new Tao. Yo, this is the new way. You are what you do and you are what you say, so please be responsible for the part that you play. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, that was great. Wagnerian in the scope. <laughs> Wonderful. Ooh, really. I, I, I had a little bit of a problem to really understand. It was very quick. And I would really appreciate if after the show you would um, copy and paste this in the in the comment stream. Yeah. Oh, the lyric? Nice. Yeah, yeah. The also yours, uh, Scott, would be nice so that we can hear the yes. text. Because this leads us a little bit into integral. Yeah, Why it does. Why is your music integral or your art integral? What is the difference? What is that? What does it mean? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I, I want to play the person who asks the dumb questions here, you know? Because I have... Uh, I have you know, a background in art history, you know, I can go back and I can tell you what century things were printed, painted in, etc. Uh, and, and I really enjoy that. I, I see it in buildings, I see it in statues and painting and so on, and I can do it with music too, you know. And then I get to a point about 10 years ago and I started seeing integral stuff and I said, I don't understand that. What's this, you know? What's going on here that, boom, that I don't quite get, you know? What is it that I didn't quite get, you know, even though I could go through all this history of art, you know, and appreciate the art? 
Who would like to, who would like to um, enlighten me? Hmm? Yeah. Don't all talk at once. Oh, I'll, I'll go. But I'll go first. You go first, Scott. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go first. <laughs> you know, I'm ready yeah. to jump right in the deep end, but. <laughs> all right. Uh, how about this, man? I'll carve it out, and then you do the details, all right? All right, all right. Yes. How's that sound? <laughs> Start the carving, man. Yeah, I'll carve it. I I think that well, fundamentally, the the whole the whole thing of of integral or the aqua theory is development. So everybody develops through stages. Everybody develops. Everybody starts out square one. Um, so if you apply development to art. That's what you'll see. So you'll or hear. So you'll you'll see in Moses made was the same that Abraham drank. Gave to me upon bended knee was the same when he fell asleep. Well the sun refused to shine. And those daughters of the divine, they drank from the vine, from the vine. Cup of coffee Moses made. His beard was long and gray and stuff. Long hours of talking over stuff. Cup of coffee Moses made. Well, the sun refused to shine. And those daughters were drunk on wine. They straightened out and they flew right, they flew right, they flew right, and now I know, and now, and now I know. Thank you. Oh, thank you very oh, much, yes. Scott. God, this that was, was nice. very nice. Oh. And I want to thank you. ask our watchers if they have noticed that the lower third with the name of Scott has some similarity with ours. Mm -hmm. And this is not by chance. And maybe because what's behind us here. What's behind us, yeah, yeah sure, too. Yeah. too. Because we uh -huh. want to say that Scott has created our colors for the Wisdom Factory. And we are very, very grateful. When he heard about this uh, project we were having, he said, oh, how can I collaborate? And I loved his colors. And so we are so fortunate to mm -hmm. have it. Yep, we mm -hmm. are indeed. <laughs> so first question. Well, that was really nice, Scott. And, and I could see, you know, there was there was more than a, a literal line in there. There was something uh, behind what you were saying. And yeah. we're <clears throat> talking about interval. Let us first ask him how come that he is a musician and he is an artist. Yeah. Maybe we start yeah. here. Okay. Well, uh, I, I kind of, I kind of um, was born that way. I'd say, but as an artist, somebody that it just kind of runs in the blood. You could say too. My great, my grandfather is an artist, and um, so I'm an artist. And sometimes, you know, think it's amazing how things happen like that. But for me, um, it it really started to shine when I was uh, about eight years old, and then. I had an art teacher that kind of saw that in me, and then um, because of that, then I decided that that was really kind of my identity for a long time, and uh, still is. So I haven't really given up on it. I've always, I've always been making art, and there was a time, you know, where you get wounded as an artist, but 
you you, st you start to kind of heal and move through that stuff and and um, so, uh, in terms of music I I started out as a drummer so um, well even before then it was piano back when I was little but drummer drummer in high school and played a lot of rock and roll bands ska punk bands playing a lot of drums so I, I just taken up the guitar not that long ago and I enjoy uh, Belting out some songs on that, <laughs> yeah. And and the visual uh, art that you got into, you have a history with that too. That's right. So I I feel that I'm more I'm a stronger visual artist, and uh, the you know I went to school, I went to college for art, and I you know got a degree in art studio with a painting kind of focus and you know was certified to teach art I, I work in special education so I get a I get a whole creative aspect of my being that I use there but um, visual art all throughout love to paint love to draw I see things compositionally I see the world that way and um, and it all started to come together that um, there's a certain style that's forming and and since I've learned uh, studied more philosophy and done a lot of meditation, gotten into integral theory. I feel like I'm a more cohesive representation of myself and therefore that that particular aspect of me comes out more in the art and even more so these days. So um so yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Well great. And what I I I'm noticing as you're speaking here is that uh, you have a very uh, kind of grounded uh, way of uh, presenting yourself that is very uh, calming, reassuring, and authentic. I like well, that. thank you, thank you, Mark. That's very. Yeah. You're a sweet guy. Fishing <laughs> <laughs> for compliments. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to to David. He's sitting down here so alone. So patiently. <laughs> One of the nice things you got to say about me, I'm pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, tell oh, us well, about you and your art too. Then we can say some nice things. Then. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I um, I liked his uh, answer about being born an artist. I think that everybody is born an artist, and society kind of pounds it out of us, or. Um, it's all, it's also something that is is nurtured, you know. I, um, so I think it's it's something that's developed. I started when I was really young. I think it starts when you, you know, are drawing or coloring or something, and you go and you show your mommy or your daddy, and they're like, "That's good. Keep doing that," you know. And and you do. And I never stopped. Um, I know that society has this way of telling people things like, oh, that's not realistic, or that's not a good way to make money, and and that and that bit may be true, you know, but um, money is is a, a means in itself, not, not an end, and I would like to think that art and self-expression is, is really a, an important part. Again, yeah. singing and hearing words of wisdom, let it be. In the wisdom factory. <laughs> she sings, yeah. Hello and welcome to the Wisdom Factory, a forum for open minded people like you and us uh, who have knowledge and experience and wisdom to share with the world. Uh, I'm uh, Mark Davenport and I'm Heidi Hernlein. All right. And our topics in this series have covered many areas of human experience. We like to invite people who not only have interesting things to say about their own topics and their lives, but who also have an evolved perspective on themselves and what they're doing. So these are people who feel inspired to contribute to the creation of a, a better world by helping people gain a, a better understanding and perspective on what is happening both in the world and in their own lives, and what they can contribute to the resolution 
of the many problems we are facing at this moment in our history. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. And you are watching today the 16th episode of our Wisdom Factory show, and which is called Art and Music a la Integral. And our guests are Scott Marshall and David Long. Mm -hmm. But before uh, we talk a little bit more yeah. about that, we can introduce ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have created this series because we want to bring out into the world our knowledge and our experience, which we have learned in quite a bit of a oh, long many, many decades, yes. And many things who have opened our vision of the world and what it is all about. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly because we were attracted by integral theory, and this is very several years ago. Mm -hmm. For me, about 20 years ago, for you a little mm -hmm. bit shorter. Yes. But no. it was a moment when understanding came. And we want to give you the opportunity to have a little bit of a glimpse of that. Professionally, we are counselors and coaches. And especially for creating thriving relationships, mm -hmm. <laughs> like we, <laughs> we yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And we run a cultural association, um, a retreat and a guest house. This is called Paradiso Integrale, which you find here when you look on the event page. And this place is in Umbria, in Italy. And you are very welcome to stop by and come and see us. And that is where we're broadcasting from today. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And before we go to the music part, I want to say today is a special day because we are ending the first series mm -hmm. of our Wisdom Factory and the second series will begin in 6th of March. So today is Celebration Day and what is better for that than art and music? And with that I give over to the music. Oh, Scott, Scott. give us a little bit. Okay, let me, just, let me just make a, an adjustment. Yes. Right. And we mute. Okay. Get the guitar here. Okay. So this is a, this is a song called Moses Coffee. Of coffee, mo part of, of being human and um, understanding theory. You know, the more understanding you have, the more that affects your your control. And so, you know, here are changes over time as you as you grow and evolve. What was the question? <laughs> Do you say some nice things to him? Do I say some nice yeah, things on. about you first? <laughs> you know what what I really enjoy about about you, David, is that you go right for the hard stuff, the deep stuff. You know that uh, you are ready to dive in and and parse this this whole business out. You know and and turn it into words. You know, you may be talking about visual art, you may be talking about your music, but when you talk about it, you have a vocabulary and a determination to take it apart and analyze it and see what you're doing and to be able to tell what other people are doing also. And it's a, it's a priceless gift. I do appreciate that. Man, you are a, a very sweet guy. You do have... <laughs> <laughs> but the, the audience can see that we know you already. We have done already shows together and yeah. collaborated. There is a comment from Nassim, and he asks you, where are Scott and David located? Would oh. you like to ask uh, to answer to that? Mm -hmm. Sure, I'll go first. Um, I'm in a, a town called Rumney, New Hampshire, which is here in the northeast. And you go, you, but you USA, go back and forth. USA, USA, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I'm located in an undisclosed, in undisclosed location, coming to you as a digital hologram in the interwebs. No, <laughs> I, I live in, uh, I live in Fayetteville, Arkansas, right now. Okay. Okay, so um, I know you have prepared, David, something, but you don't sing, you said, because for various reasons, And but you have the text of a song and you want to present it to us. Would you like to do that in this moment? Sure, sure. 
Okay. And it's um, I'm just gonna do a spoken word version of of one of my songs. This song is called "With Your Time." It's off of my album, "The Outer Regions of Inner Space," and it goes like this: Behold the moon. It reflects the sun. It's always shifting in its phases. In the darkest night, illuminating paths, reflecting on the water as it blazes. Shed your shadow and be born again like the self-eating serpent that sheds its skin. Learn lessons from the moon. Embrace the feminine. You should understand why we feel this connection. We rise each day because the sun's resurrection. It's just too bright to see. So we worship its reflection naturally. Realizing our vision actually, from fantasy to factually, we simply use causality to create a new reality. It's all about your mentality, morality from a perspective beyond mortality. Stop worshiping that fallacy, universal commonality. Dispense with the formalities, you could never have neutrality or forget about practicality. It's all about what you do. And what do you do with your time? I'm moving people up the spiral dynamically. Applying this integral philosophy, logic and theosophy, cartography of human possibility, flexibility of the body and mind as a useful tool for I am this in time. Yeah, I'm the divine. If you seek, then you'll find. I am the living truth behind your symbols and signs. I am every light in every lifetime. I am infinite, eternal. Go ahead and rewind. This is my message in a bottle. Send it out to the planet. The future's in our making. So